there, this is Christy Lewis from Dostoevsky in Space. Today I'm going to talk about things that I really hate in a classic, and we're just going to start right out with gigantic cast. I have a really hard time following a gigantic cast. Let's talk about War and Peace for a second. That book in part one was such a drag. I had such a hard time with part one. Things got better as the book went on. You get more familiar with the characters etc. But that's quite a big hurdle to overcome, and in Dr. Zhivago, I didn't overcome it. I DNF Dr. Zhivago because I could not keep track of the characters, among other things, that we'll talk about. If there's like one character that I can latch onto in a story, then I do okay, because then I can just reread it later and catch all the nuances. But if you're needing to follow a cast of like 20 or something, I'm not doing it. Next, and this one's very unfortunate, and not everybody's gonna say this, but poetry. I have such a hard time reading poetry. As much as I try, I am a slow, easily distractible reader, and poetry just, I struggle with it so much. During Feb Regency, actually, I tried some poetry and I did actually really enjoy it, but I feel like it was pretty simple poetry. <laughs> it's not like Paradise Lost or The Fairy Queen by Edmund Spencer, which I tried when I was in college, and I, I just really struggled with those. And I struggled with Dante as well. Dante I'm willing to give more of a shot because I just find his subject matter so entertaining. <laughs> Regardless, poetry is just hard for me. It's one of those things that I really don't like in a classic. A deep and offensive, to me, understanding of women. And this is something that's really always startling to me when I find it a modern classic. Like, Una, you can stop watching now if you want. I feel bad whenever I talk about Slaughterhouse-Five because I know that it's like your favorite I just really struggled with that one. I didn't think it was all a bad book, but definitely the representation of women bothered me enough that I I could not recommend this book. I, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> and similar to 100 Years of Solitude, it wasn't just the portrayal of women that ruined that book for me, and I wouldn't even say it was that bad bad of a book. Again, both of these are like three star books for me. They're not like one star books, but the understanding of women was just not there in either of those books, and it really startled me. It doesn't surprise me as much to find it in older classics, and it doesn't bother me as much in older classics. A lot of times the understanding of women was not that offensive in older classics to me personally, uh, but that is not the case with modern classics. Modern classics, you need, to, you need to understand women better. You can talk to them. They're everywhere. If it makes me feel sad with no reprieve, and I'm thinking specifically here of Madame Bovary because I struggled with that book so much and I did not ever laugh, it actually made me feel depressed. I tried rereading it because I read it in school and really hated it even though I could see that there's some artistic merit there, I also just really hated it. I didn't like anything about it. So <laughs> give me Dostoevsky or Flannery O'Connor anytime because they also make me laugh, even though they can be depressing. <laughs> Stylistically avant-garde, I really don't like classics that have an avant-garde style. The reason I generally go for classics is because a lot of times they're surprisingly story-focused and character-focused, and the language is beautiful and it's not hard to read. At least a lot of the classics that I find, like I'm thinking Victorian classics here, are really easy to read usually. But like Mrs. Dalloway, that was so hard for me, and I know that not everybody struggled with it, but that style killed it for me killed it. I could not read that. I couldn't follow it, kind of like with Dr. Zhivago. I would just read a page and read it over again, and I would still not get everything about it. And then when I have a discussion with my friends like Tiffany from Beautiful Minutia, who is like just a really comprehensive reader, and she's talking about these things that she notices in Dr. Zhivago that I technically read but don't remember, that to me is very frustrating and discouraging. And finally, plots that rely on miscommunication. This is a big problem, especially with Victorian classics. I'm thinking of Romola here, it was the big offender that is in my head, Romola by George Eliot. I really struggled with that one because I could not stand the secret. The deep, dark secret! Ugh, why do we use miscommunication still as a plot? Like, why does that exist as a plot? It's a terrible plot. When it happens in K-dramas, it usually resolves, like, within an episode, and that's how it should be. <laughs> okay, guys, that is it for me, but I want to hear things that you really don't like to find in your classics, things that really turn you off about it. Tell me down below, I really want to hear. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.